Hey YouTube, it's Hanna Loba. If you want more Moto America content, check out the new and vastly improved Moto America Live Plus app. It's the only place you can catch all the race action in one place all season long. Click the link in the description below. You know, going from pole position today, Bobby Fong, I mean, unbelievable effort. And how about Sean Dillon Kelly? If you'd had that in your betting charts at the beginning of the weekend, you'd be a rich guy. Josh Heron third, Gagne, Bobier, and Baz are going to be rounding out row two. Then we have Cam Peterson, J.D. Beach, and Richie Escalante, the first of our Suzukis. Hayden Gillen, Brandon Posh, and Max Flinders just outside of row number four. Then we're going to have Benjamin Smith, Nolan Lampkin, and Ashton Yates, along with Jason Waters, Ezra Bobier. Good to see him back here, and Joe Giannato. Then we're going to have Alex Arango, who's teammates to SDK up at the front. William Posse, Daniel Lewis, and Bobby Davis round out our field. 19 laps scheduled for this Steel Commander Superbike race. Here we go, reps are up. Clutches are out, we're away racing. It doesn't look like our home center got a good launch either. Bobby Fong, but it looks like it could be Sean Dillon Kelly, and there goes Josh Heron up the inside. And just like that, from Moto2 to the front of a Steel Commander Superbike race for the moment goes STK, but Heron goes up the inside. It looks like Josh Heron on the number two bike on that Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati will lead. Yeah, he does a really good job. STK got that bike off the line first time for him in race conditions. So SDK slots himself there into second. Bobby Fong did okay, Greg. It looked like he was gonna go back a few spots to your point, but he was able to get that bike into third spot. But J uh, Josh Heron, with his experience, snuck up the inside of SDK as they went up through turn one, put himself in a good spot through those S's. He finds himself leading as they get ready to head onto this back straightaway and unleash these super bikes for the first time. Jake Gagne, your number one plate, snugly in fourth position. And SDK, Sean Dillon Kelly on that top pro racing, BMW M1000RR. Alpha, the technical partner, and there goes Cameron Fobier in fifth place, also on a BMW M1000RR. Really not a lot of movement between our top five, six riders. Everybody kind of line astern there. Cam Peterson was able to make a move on Bobier. Bobier came out of that turn seven just behind Gagne and would lose a spot, but it's going to be Josh Heron leading him down that hill for the first time and lead the first lap in 2024. And a good chance for Sean Dillon Kelly to get an idea of where he stands corner to corner. You can see coming out of 10B, just a little bit better on the lever. Now keep in mind, Heron doesn't have to be. Fong does, so Heron's going to not abuse the front tire as much as Fong does to close that gap. Down the hill comes Fong. Is he going to make a shot? He does. He takes a shot. He's going to go up the inside, and Bobby Fong will take over the lead as they come to the stripe. It's going to be 15 laps to go, and Heron's going to use that Ducati horsepower to motor on by. For that motorcycle to really refine their overall setup, they're making far fewer adjustments overall because they have such a strong baseline from last year. It's also nice to have the teammate in Loris Baz. So Josh has been giving Baz a toe here and there, helping him get up to speed, but also asking Baz for some constructive criticism to see where he can improve. So Baz has been a welcome addition to that program as well. And he's working really well with the bike and the crew. He said that he can actually feel the bike a lot better. It's after spending the last two years on such stiff tires and stiff machinery, it's nice to be able to get good feedback from the bike so he can better understand how to improve. Bobby Fong up the inside for the lead. Surprise Heron, and now Heron gets forced off the racetrack. He wasn't able to make that corner after being surprised by Fong. So Josh Heron with a big save, and Gagne went around Bobby Fong, but Bobby Fong's gonna retake the lead, and Gagne trying to drive up the inside, up the hill. And just as we said, things were settling down, all of a sudden it's getting racy up there. So, Gagne, the number one plate to the lead, Bobby Fong in second. He was kind of just rolling around at the front, doing a really good job, and you can see Bobby comes from quite a ways back, sees Josh kind of turning it in, and the worst part for Josh here is just trying to get that thing through that thick gravel. But like I said, 25-2, SDK is at 25-8, but Baz is at a 26-3. So, here we go, Bobier pulls out of that draft on the number 50, not quite past him enough. As wow. they head down this hill, that, that number 50 bike's not slow, is it? No, that is a very fast motorcycle. We know how he likes to kind of be the lone soldier in a team, but him and Bass have such a great relationship. You can see, again, if you follow these guys, they're always hanging out together and things. There's a mutual respect. Perrin actually said yesterday he helped Baz a little bit on his qualifying because Loris has been struggling ever so slightly. Here's that pass into turn six that was predicted, and now he's just going to keep his head going forward and uh, focus on seeing if he can get up to the back of SDK with two and a half to go. Bobier. Onto the back straightaway with a lap and a half to go. Man, 
that number one just jumps off that corner. Hold the trigger. It literally jumps off that corner. Makes me wonder if Bobby's using first or second gear because Gagne's bike jumped, and I would suspect that's first as Bobier goes through. And now Bobier's going to look down the inside with a gonna, lap or so to go. It's Cameron Bobier. He actually crashed earlier in the weekend there, but he was able to hold on to it. No confidence lost, but it was slowed down enough where Fong was able to make a bike length back. And here comes the fight right back by the number one plate. Gagne wants to lead this. I think he's got something in the tank. We're going to the white flag lap. So now all bets are off here in the Steel Commander Superbike race number one. Into turn number one they go. And Cameron Bobier right on the rear wheel of Gagne. I don't know, man. I think Bobier's just been kind of sitting back there because that BMW went past Fong easier than it has all race long. And so he just needs to stay glued to the back of that number one. And if I know Bobier, he's going to pull out of that draft and he's going to go down into turn 10 extremely tight and make whoever wants to beat him go around the outside of him. So right now is the patient game. I don't think he's going to try to do anything with Gagne down in turn six, although I could be wrong because he got a tremendous drive out of there. And he's going to go past the number one. He's got a lot of belief in that bike. Gagne oh. turns it back up underneath him, though. And now Fong's going to get a double bike draft. Let's see if this number one gets off this corner as good as it did the last. And we're going to see if Bobier has been holding back on the throw. The BMW's got a lot of horsepower. He hasn't done a lot of drafting and passing, but here he goes on the back straightaway as Cam Peterson lap traffic. So Bobier takes the lead. Now it's going to be a breaking duel down into turn number 10, and Bobier leaves it so late. Can he get it turned? He does a great job. Gagne now with a couple bike lengths between them. Up over the hill they come. We're going to see if Bobier is going to park it up the inside. Down the hill into the hard breaking corner. It's Cameron Bobier back to Moto America Superbike action. Onto the front straightaway. Bobier behind the bubble pulls the trigger and holds on to win by two tenths of a second over Gagne and Bobby Fong rounding out the podium. Welcome back to Moto America, Cameron Bobier. Incredible. Talked about the tire wear. Talked about having to, that second half of the race, but we're expecting weather. What change will that impact? That's going to change a lot, but you know, all these guys are really good in the wet, especially Cam. Jake Gagne is really good in the wet, but it's definitely going to, it'll throw some wild cards in there for sure. There'll be some guys in there we won't expect. Uh, it's going to be totally different, and it also depends on how much rain we have. How wet is the track? going to be is it going to be mixed conditions or is it going to looks like it's going to be really wet so it's so the results have two tenths of a second margin of victory over Gagne Bobby Fong outstanding run SDK Heron what a bounce back to go 4.2